Welcome back to my channel. Always happy to find you here. I upload on every Thursday, but when you subscribe, you will be alerted and you will know when new content is uploaded for your pleasure. And um, I have not been very good at promoting my own stuff. So uh, please get my book on Amazon, Keys for Dealing with the People at Work. And also, if it ain't one thing, it's the people at work. If it ain't one thing, it's the people at work. I have um, five books now. There's two of them. Um, they're all on Amazon and at local bookstores here in Southern California. So yay, uh, please get them. You can also order them through my YouTube channel. If you send a secure email, it will come to me and I will have the great pleasure of signing them for you. Oh, I love that. All right, so please uh, check it out. Today's topic. Um, so a few weeks ago, I did a three-part series on soul synchronicity. And I have to say, that has gotten the most comments, a lot of comments. Talk more about that. What about this? And how do you see that? Uh, and but what about this situation? And all of, just a lot of inquiries. <laughs> A lot of inquiries came from that one subject. So it has uh, struck a chord with us uh, and that's all good, that's cool. But again, my my channel is not just specifically for relationships, but it is about treatment and how we treat other people and how we should be kind and respectful, honoring, generous and um, of servanthood to one another. So. That includes all relationships. So when I talk about that, I am not just talking about your love partner. And love partners these days come in so many different variations that I don't specifically discuss that. I just talk about the energy between people, the feminine energy, the masculine energy, which we both genders carry. And all genders carry. So having said that, I just want to focus on a piece of the topic of soul synchronicity. So let's, so piggybacking from last week's upload about celebrity divorces and how contentious they are and how horrible they can be viewed in public and how dark that energy is. Braiding that with soul synchronicity. You don't have synchronicity when you do that. First of all, you, you have just the opposite. There's a friction. Um, but keep in mind, and I don't think we're often mindful enough, that when we are with someone in whatever type of relationship, whatever type of relationship, there is an agreement on the treatment, spoken or unspoken. So this is why the man that hit her wouldn't dare hit her. Because spoken or not, this person does not do abuse. That person may be abuse regulated. And while we all go, who would take abuse regulated? Some people's relationships thrive and live on that type of energy. The Amber Heard and the Don, Johnny Depp last. They're still going on now. But I talked about that. The energy of that made up the relationship until it exhausted them both out. Certain people don't like that. I like calm. Now, does it mean vanilla? That doesn't mean that there's no uh, friction less. There's no, there's no, there's less friction because I don't bring that. And I typically am with someone who doesn't want to bring that to me. What they do is they start shielding that back from me. They can have problems that I don't know about because they want to shield it from me. They, they tend to want to protect me and that's okay. They go fix it before it ever gets to me that kind of thing. And they don't make me the target because I'm easily hurt in a relationship that way. I don't want it. I don't, I don't want it. 
So other relationships, other people are okay with that. So this is what I mean by the synchronicity of the relationship. Having said that, when we move to the relationship solidification, by that I mean indoctr indoctrination of it, meeting each other's family, sharing holidays with each other's family, moving in with one another, getting engaged and marrying. The more you lock it in, the more of that which you will or will make not tolerate should have already been ironed out. Even what I called in my last video, the exit strategy. That's what some people say, the prenup. No, prenup really is almost a financial document. If you leave me, don't take all my money, <laughs> all of that. No, I don't want your money, babe. You can take your money with you. I want you. I'm gonna fight you for you. You ain't going away, you stay. You see, you see? Mm -mm. You got me through all this for you all the way to the mirror. You are staying. Now, I don't come that way in the relationship, but it's known that if I marry you, divorce is not an option. I don't want to divorce. That's why I married you. All of this that we often forget to remember as we're wanting to leave instead of stay. So I think, I guess what I'm saying, as I seem to have gotten comfortable here, because just looking at myself like, girl, you should like you comfortable. I am comfortable with this topic. And let me tell you why. If it is not natural for you to be kind hearted, generous in the outpouring of your love, relentlessly respectful, harboring of goodwill, depositing of trust. If all those things aren't already with you, the fragments of them not being with you is what you're displaying. That's showing you the area you need to work on. If you exit right too quick, you need to work on that. You're impulsive. It's very difficult to date an impulsive person. They make decisions too quick that could be harmful. And then they are having a hard time trying to correct that. So if impulsivity is a problem, fix that. Be quick about fixing that. <laughs> All of, that. <laughs> uh, all of that, it, are the, it is the interlockings of who we are, the things that trigger us, the things that tap us. Those, you need to, we need to learn that as much as anything else because it is a part of our soul. It is a part of our energy. It is a part of our unseen attribute, personality. You know my personality by the things I do. Values. You know my values by the things that I cherish. Habits. You know the things that I am regulating in my life. All of that. But in relationships, whatever type of relationships, treatment are those things. Treatment are those things. That is why a wealthy, a very wealthy husband that buys her diamonds and pearls and all that can still go home and slap her around at night and no one knows about it because he's not fixed inside. A good man with a good job that, you know, pays the bills and stuff can still go home and drink all night long. And then when he wants to make love to you later, you don't want it. You, it disgusts you. No one wants to make love to a drunk. I'm sorry, brother. I don't care how fine you are. Our sister, whoever you are, or the partner with the drinking bar. Nobody wants to make love to someone in a drunken state unless they're drunken too. And that's the mass made in heaven or hell, however you so choose it. So choose your partners wisely. 
And if you like the negativity or the darkness that others call that, and it's working for you, the Johnny Depp and the Amanda uh, 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 Amber Heard, if that's working for you, so be it. Let that be for you. Let that be for you. But when a train wrecks, be respectful. I guess you can't because you disrespected each other all along. So again, it's you. It's who you are. Set your standard. And you don't even have to say it, but set it. There's a certain way every mate I have has treated me. And I never talk about a mate to a potential mate. Or no, I never talk about them. So how is it they all have the same standard? I pick the same guy. Treat her like a lady. Treat, make her feel like a queen. You don't have to put her on no pedestal. No, no, no. I'm an earth person. I don't even like a pedestal. <laughs> I was a tomboy. I don't need all that. No, but treat men. Treat her right. So do that. And I love you. Bye. I love you so much. I do. Bye, y'all.